Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri appellate attorney and a guy who likes to answer questions here on YouTube. And today we're going to talk about the concept of a fair trial. Stay tuned. So what is a fair trial? Well, it begins with probably the most important thing that sets United States jurisprudence off from most other countries, and that is the presumption of innocence. Meaning that the moment someone walks into the courtroom, no matter what the awful charge is, from rape to murder to robbery, when that defendant sits down next to their lawyer at the counsel table in the trial. They are presumed to be innocent. And they are not guilty until a jury determines that the state has proved every element of its case. That presumption of innocence is fundamental to how our trial system works. Now, one of the things that one of the important things that a person is entitled to under a case called Matthews versus Eldridge, and Matthews versus Eldridge dealt with procedural due process, one of the things that they're entitled to is notice and a right to be heard. And notice means fair notice, so that someone is tried for the crime that they committed, not for crimes that they didn't commit. That indictment must spell out the elements that they that the state intends to prove. For example, in the robbery case that the person went in, displayed a firearm, demanded money, took the money, and left. Those are the sorts of things that go into an indictment. And there are rules where a court can determine whether or not an indictment is a valid indictment or not. So fair notice is one thing. The next thing is fair procedures. So, first of all, there is a very high standard of proof in a criminal case, and that standard of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt. And I've done a video on the standard of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. You can find it in the video log here, the listing of videos that I've done. But basically it means that you have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, which means not beyond all doubt, because it's always possible to conjure up a doubt now and then, but beyond all reasonable doubts. So the next thing that we have to, we have, to have in order to have a fair trial is a neutral judge. A neutral judge is a judge that doesn't play for one team or the other. In other words, he calls him as he sees him. He's the umpire in this case. He calls balls and strikes, and that's all he does. At the end of the day, he makes certain decisions about the law and instructs the jury, but he's neutral. He doesn't have a dog in the fight, and he doesn't purport to have a dog in the fight. A fair judge is very important, and a neutral judge is very important. The next thing, an unbiased jury that is a fair cross-section of the community. So you need an unbiased jury that is a fair cross-section of the community. Now, if that means that if there are 15% of the community is black and 5% Hispanic, uh, and the rest, the 80% is white, it doesn't mean you have to have 80% of whites and 5% of Hispanics. Something in the margins is fine. So a, a jury with only 60% white people, with Asians and, and uh, other, other races making up the jury pool would be just fine. But there has to be a fair cross-section. And most importantly, they have to have put aside any information that they acquired outside the jury room and be committed and honestly do to decide the case on the facts that are presented during the trial and only those facts. The next thing that we're entitled to is the rules of evidence. And the rules of evidence decide when something is relevant, when it's not relevant, what evidence may be admitted, and what evidence may be excluded. And we expect those rules of evidence to be applied fairly for each litigant. So the defendant can't get in information that is prejudicial, 
Uh, they can't get in information that is not relevant, and neither can the state. So fair rules of evidence fairly applied to both the plaintiff, the state, and the defendant. So the next thing we have are rules of procedure. Rules of procedure have to be adhered to. One of the rules of procedure is the Brady Rule. And the Brady Rule arose out of Brady versus Maryland, which is a famous Supreme Court case. And it basically requires the prosecutor to turn over all of the evidence in its possession that might mitigate the offense or show that the client is not guilty. All of that evidence has to be turned in or turned over to the defense. Now, certain evidence, impeachment evidence, for example, doesn't have to be disclosed. But for the most part, everything in the prosecutor's file that, that goes to the elements of guilt winds up being turned over to the defense in a Brady ruling. Finally, we need legally sound rulings. In other words, when a court makes a ruling, it has to have a rational basis. It has to be based on the law. It has to be based on the facts. And it has to be something that makes eminent sense. In other words, it shouldn't be skewed one way or the other to favor the defendant or to favor the state. And then the last thing that we have that makes a right, makes a, a fair trial is the right to appeal. If you feel the judge made errors, you can appeal the errors. When people file appeals, they do not file appeals necessarily over the result. The result is probably what leads them to file the appeal. But the appeal looks at specific errors that the judge made or that the judge is alleged to have made and asks the appellate court, based on the law, to overturn that result. And this happens with a fair amount of regularity in the courts every day. That's why we have appellate courts. We have appellate courts to protect the rights of individual litigants, and especially individual criminal defendants. It used to be that this was something, the right to a fair trial, was something that we could all agree on. But recently, the presumption of innocence seems to have been thrown out on the basis of videotapes. Videotapes only tell part of the story. They tell what you can see. They do not always tell the whole story. And the presumption of innocence says that someone is presumed innocent until proved guilty. Not they are presumed innocent until I watch a nine minute videotape. So I hope that this clears up what a fair trial is. It's Quite simply, a high standard of proof, a neutral judge, an unbiased jury, rules of evidence that are properly applied, rules of procedure that are properly applied, legally sound rulings, and a right to a fair trial. If you've enjoyed this, I hope you would take a moment to smash the like button and leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks and have a great day.